if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. Hey friends, Shane from HowToWrench.com, and we have uh, a new line of torque wrenches in the house. And uh, they reached out to us, asked us to test these, uh, check them out. Um, I can't wait to do the interview. It's going to blow your mind. Wait till you hear who's behind uh, this e-torque. Um, it, it's going to blow your mind, but I really want to save that that awesome story for when we get with the, the seasoned gentleman, I'll call him that, uh, the founder of this company, too to tell his story because it's going to be pretty impactful but these are going to be a great purchase point uh tool uh for the do-it-yourselfer and as a pro i am really digging the feel they got their digital wrenches i was really interested in just their their analog or manual wrenches here that have this awesome really vibrant white gauge um, another thing I really like about the wrench that's interesting is it's not chromed. I like this like platinum finish. I've realized it's really clean to, uh, or excuse me, really easy to wipe off. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm doing a, a dirt bike uh, tire change right now. So I'm going to grab the one that I would want to do for that. And, and this is another thing we're going to cover. We're going to do some uh, kind of revisit curriculum on how to use torque wrenches properly, how to pick the right one. You'll notice, uh, matter of fact, when, when they first reached out to me, they wouldn't send me a couple. And I said, well, that's it's really not going to make sense because all that's going to do is just, you know, point towards, you know, that one wrench versus discussing like, you know, which one should you pick? So this is pretty cool. We're going to have some other mechanics uh, test these and try them out too. And what I've been doing is just grabbing uh, my Snap-on and, and uh, Craftsman wrenches and kind of like use them in comparison. Are they clicking at the same point? You know, it's not it's not by any means any calibrator scientific test, but uh, we have a pretty strong feel uh, when we've been turning wrenches for a long time. And we do, can we can pretty quickly identify like crazy right and crazy wrong. But anyway... So, not going to pretend to say that I'm like a calibration, uh, you know, business or, or offer those services because I don't. So, what we're going to see here is I've got this 20 to 100 foot pound and that's the one I'm going to want for my axle. Okay, because I've got a 32 foot pound torque for that. And I've got uh, 13 and 19 on the brake caliper and the pinch bolts. And so, which one do I choose? I mean, this is 20. It's pretty close. But now nah, we can get it right. We could go digital. This has a really wide range. This one, I believe, goes uh, 100 or 10 to 100. And this is by far going to be like one of the most... By the way, there'll be links to all this below so you can check it out yourself. But, but this is by far probably the most popular do-it-yourself wrench because of the range and the digital and the price point on that or whatnot. But let's see what else we got. So then we have 3H drive, 50 to 250. Believe it or not, this is going to be the one I'm going to want for my pinch bolts and my um, brake caliper. And I'm just going to have to do the math and convert uh, the foot pounds to inch pounds. But this is going to get me in the right range. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll put the math up on the screen here and then let's go use them. All right, here we are at the motorcycle. Uh, got a DRZ 400 uh, S gonna do some uh, desert riding today but this is not a video on changing the wheel but I'm at this point where this the axle's been put in the brakes been pumped the suspension's been pumped to kind of center everything up but it's really important at this point that I torque things in the right order so and that's why using torque wrenches is so important because what we have here instead of having to put a tool in here to hold this we're gonna pinch this down per the correct torque not over torque it then what that's going to allow us to do is to torque the axle and then we could torque uh, the pinch bolts. And a lot of times the manual will actually say even at this point to put the bike back down, bounce the suspension and go. And then our final step before we can ride is torquing our brake caliper. So let's go ahead and at least uh, start getting this knocked out. So these right here are 13, uh, both the pinch bolts are 13 foot pounds, the brake caliper is 19 pounds and this is 32 and a half I believe. So let's, uh, I want to show you how to do that just in case you weren't sure because a lot of people just grab this because here, here's my Craftsman torque wrench. I cannot stress enough. Wait till you hear the story. I'm going to give you a little hint about who righted uh, or who designed e-torque 
I'm gonna give you a little hint holding this craftsman tool, but come back to that video in the future, near future too. So what we have here is this one goes 10 to 75. So since these are 13, it's real common people would grab this because, oh yeah, I can, it has a 13 on here, but it's really not the best wrench because imagine, just, just for purposes of education here, imagine that this torque wrench is zero and this is 100 of its capabilities. So this is 10 and this is 75. The torque wrenches are most effective in that middle two-thirds of whatever that range is. So if I have to torque something to 75, I don't want this wrench either. And I have to torque something down at 10, I don't want this. That's why I want it in the middle. And that is why I grabbed two torque wrenches to accomplish this. So we're going to go ahead and figure this out. And all we got to do is we just got to take 13 times 12. And that's 156 inch pounds. So... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this up. Let's uh, show you how cool this dial is. And then neat? Really easy to read. And then another thing that I like to do is just kiss something. Sometimes I'm in the habit of doing what I call a half torque or a kiss step. So I'm not where I want to be yet, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Torque these up. And by torquing under the specification, what you gain is you gain an opportunity to feel, is something wrong? Does something not feel right? Does that, does that bolt feel weird? Another thing you want to do, uh, you notice when I was, I was getting close, I was actually trying to be out of the way of the camera. If I hold back here, it can actually alter my torque, or if I hold up here, I got whole videos on that. Check out the links below in the uh, playlist of how to best use torque wrenches. But for right now, you really want to place your hand right here. Okay, and then I want to pull it even and slow until until I hit that click point. Okay, I want to support the motorcycle from not falling over. Okay, I, well, I don't want to do a swing through it. And this is what I'm saying. I did another video with uh, August Racing was here, and we were doing a, the backup Daytona motor, and we loved the feel of this the first time out. So we got a ways to go here. I'm going to go to full torque now. 140, 150. Now we got a small scale down here. Two, three, four, five, and six. That easy. There is a lock, so I can lock it in place. And then, torqued, and torqued. Okay, all right. All right, got that one out of the way. So we're gonna do the axle next, and that was 32 and a half. So I'll just go a little bit below the spec, do the same thing. And what this will do is make sure I'm not spinning on the pinch that I would have to have a hold tool. That's why it's really important to have everything clean. We slide that in so you have a full grip surface. If you're dealing with a dirty axle or crap that's in here, that doesn't give you as much grip either. Okay, we're getting close here, so I'm gonna grab a torque wrench in the right spot. Okay. That was like 28. So here we are at 30. One, two, point five. Check that out, it even has the half step. Pretty stinking cool. So 30, 2.5, 30, 2.5, 32 and a half. lock it too. Boy, that feels great. Now I can pinch these. Okay, another thing on, on tire changes be a good idea is to go ahead and check your work. Make sure there's no binding. And now we need to grab our calculator and go up to our 1, 2 times 19. We got 228. 8. There it is. All right, another thing, torque wrenches, like I said, I go into this a lot in the other videos, but you do wanna back them down, uh, put them back in their case at the low setting. Don't go beyond that low setting. They say you can damage them as, as well there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some real great content with the experts here. Let me go ahead and get these down. 
just so I don't forget because I want to take good care of my tools and then they definitely will be cleaned off and put back in the storage case can't stress enough take good care of your tools let's get comfortable here oh my goodness look at that I'm, I'm really learning about what these tools all have here look at that stop hey how cool is that I didn't notice that on this little one look at that stop man way cool got a lot to learn all right pretty cool stuff huh uh, I want to thank eTorque for reaching out to HowToWrench.com for asking us to uh, test their tools and uh, they're really cool I explained to them like you know we we're pretty particular about the products we take on and in the first struggle I have I've had a lot of people try to send me torque wrenches and uh, testing equipment and I struggle for the fact that it's hard for me I I'm kind of cautious about that because I can't test like the calibration of this stuff and I'm going to tell you why I accepted e-torque I don't need torque wrenches I mean look it no no bullshit if you're new to the channel if you are not familiar with how transparent how to wrench is and what we do uh you need to get need to get uh updated on what that really looks like but here's my torque wrench you know tool drawer i mean i have everything from harbor freight stuff that i keep in my trailer it's got the snap on digital another snap on there's max in here there's craftsman in here there's uh yeah like i said even mini mac ones uh, another Mac one, spoke wrench, torque wrench. I mean, we, we didn't need torque wrenches. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm going to tell you why I uh, told uh, eTorque, go ahead and set, send these. Let's check this out. It's a story. This, this story is really, like, historic, and I really like learning about this stuff. Like, how did they come to, you know, make a product? How did they come? Who decided how to make a calibration tool? Who decided it should be this or that or whatnot? So we're going to be able to capture a lot of that his, uh, that history when it comes to torque wrenches um, from another uh, iconic brand. And that's who, that's who the fellow of this company is. So this is really cool. We're really looking forward to it. And we are going to be you know, using these like crazy. I'm going to tell you right now from, I, I have, you know, a professional 26 years of turning wrenches. That doesn't count being a kid and learning and breaking stuff and everything else. So we'll just talk about professional, but 26 years. I, I've had junk tools in my hands. I'm not going to say a brand. Uh, people argue about this all day long, but there is a completely different feel between slap together mass produced junk and something that's quality and i feel like this is quality i can't wait for other people to try them out i i do know that the uh, august nord racing team uh is trying them out and they uh work with other professional teams that they're gonna be trying like i mean there's just we're really curious we're really curious because i'm gonna tell you right now the price kind of blows me away so it, it makes you dance around that that idea of like and it's got to be hard to sell anything in in the world today like it's tough there's so much competition may the, the moment you make something somebody copies it junks it out and how do you know the difference i mean think of the the best example that somebody's making fake ngk spark plugs like how insane is that right box looks the same dino jet has fake jet kits out there being made so it's it's really hard to know uh good from bad so we're gonna have all links we're gonna keep doing this we appreciate uh you being patient with us as we learn about companies and tools and try to have the most transparent tool reviews so we appreciate everything you do make sure and like share subscribe all that good stuff we'll see you again soon and as always keep wrenching